Well, hey there, hi there, ho there, it is Anxious Cynic, and I am back today to show you how to use paths in Minimator 2. So yeah, I guess we don't really need much of an intro beyond that. So let's go ahead and bring in a path. And it looks like nothing happens. I can click on this, and we have our path here. It's not actually centered, so let me just do this. So what you need to do when you first create a path is actually go over here and add a point. Click add point. And then now we have something we can actually keyframe and manipulate in the scene. So you can see there, I got that point there. Again, it doesn't really seem like there's much going on there. I can move that, but it's just moving that point. And what we need is another point. So what we can do is we can either click on the path object here and click add point, or we can actually control D and duplicate that point there. So then when we take this point and move it, you will see we indeed now have a path. So there you go, that's the end of the tutorial. That is how you create paths. But for real, now that we have a path, what can we do with it? Well, one thing is you can actually just make the path visible. I'm gonna control D, create another point there, do this, and we're just gonna slide it this way, and then you see we get, uh, it's like using curves in a graphic design application or something. You get this kind of interpolation of curvature. Another thing we can do is add detail to it. We can connect the ends. So then let's go ahead and do like this. Create a little bit more of a triangle here. And there you see we have a little bit more of a circular object by making the ends connect. Go ahead and turn that off and then we hit that nice little boomerang. We can adjust the detail in the curve here. As you can see, we got these kind of sharp points. So if I Bring the detail number up, it smooths it out. If I bring it down, not so smooth. Down here under the generate shape, we can control the radius, like how big that shape is. By default, it's eight. Texture link, now this is if we're adding a texture to it. Uh, you can determine how many pixels your texture is and how you want it to represent on there. We'll show that in a minute. But we also have this tube shape, so we can actually check that and turn this into a three-dimensional object and we can go down here to shape detail and actually make that more round like a cylinder or we can bring it down and make it triangular and so now let's take a look at how texturing this goes as you can see i dropped down my material tab i have some textures in here that i want to try out and we do have an actual texture that this can export so if you notice down here you have export map and if you click that it's going to generate a file here that we can save, uh, which I've already done. So what I'm going to do is actually go to the project properties, resources, add a resource, go into my project file and right here where we saved the exported image and I'm going to bring that in as a texture. So now that I have that in the project, I can go over here to my texture drop down and there it is. So if I apply this, then you can see we have the bottom sides so now we have a bit more of a cylindrical shape and we basically have all this around it is the sides the very end right there is the top right there is the bottom so now that we know how this texture is being mapped onto it what happens if we take off the tube shape do like that and essentially the, the top in your 2d section is going to be on the sides panel for your texture map. So here's the image of the texture that we export. You can see that on the left side here is the sides, middle is top, right is bottom. So if you're going to map a texture onto this, then typically, if you're using a 2D object anyway, uh, the sides side over here is uh, the only one you really need to be worried about. So what I got here is I'm gonna apply a well texture to it. And as you can see, this is just kind of a normal texture for Minecraft and it's not got the wide aspect ratio or whatever as the map texture so what we need to do is basically make this canvas three times as wide so I'm just gonna do that in the, the program that I use here so I'm just gonna th three times 16 is 48 so if I do that and then that gives me the layout of the mapped texture thing that we uh, saw there that it exported so since the left side was the sides and that's the one that we need I'm gonna leave it just like this and save it, export it, and uh, bring it into Minimator. Okay, so back here in Minimator, now if I go back to here and I've imported that texture, and if I apply it on this, then you see that we get the rel here. 
and you can kind of see in the little image there how the rail is kind of stretched over there to the side and then of course you know the texture length like I said this is a 16 pixel uh, tall texture but if I reduce it then we kind of scrunch it up if I extend it further then we can stretch it out thing is if I uh, wanted to try and make this 3d if I go to tube shape it it uh, that's something a little bit crazy there so we'll just leave that alone that's something to explore at a later time so anyway that's the basics of how you might uh use a path and texture it and all that stuff but like what do we do with it what's the way to utilize a path in an animation other than making quirky shapes and interesting things like that so let's forget all this texture stuff we just did and not have it a textured path we're going to go back to generate shape and turn that off okay so here's the new path setup that i want to have and i'm actually going to go ahead and connect the ends we're going to make it a loop and we've got a little bit of a misshapen circle there and uh let's go ahead and bring in a character i'm going to just bring in a default steve and we'll plop him somewhere in there and what we're going to do to steve is give him a constraint so with Steve selected here, I'm going to go over here to constraints and I'm going to put him on the path. And that's of course named path because that's what we have. Uh, it's not actually in the library. What am I doing? <laughs> that's the name of it here. If we wanted to change the name of that, we could change it to poopy. And when we click on Steve, he is constrained to poopy which is unfortunate for him but it works for us so as you can see steve is now moved over here towards the path not exactly you know on it but we can adjust that and what we want to do is maybe have steve move along the path maybe we have a com complex kind of uh path that we want our character walking in and paths are perfect for making paths who would have thought that what we're gonna do now is just set another keyframe let's zoom out on our timeline here oh i guess we can't zoom out any further damn it it's making me look stupid all right we're gonna create another keyframe so as you can see we have a keyframe at the beginning and we have a keyframe over here so with that selected i'm gonna go over here to the offset and just bring that on let's say 360 and then when we back up and we watch this Steve's doing some weird stuff so one thing I'm gonna do is since Steve was kind of placed out of center we're just gonna go ahead and reset his position and as you can see there he is now directly on the path and when we click play now he's kind of doing what we need him to do and we also probably need to reset the position of uh, that one so the only thing going on with Steve is the path and as you can see there he is following it splendidly. So let's go ahead and give Steve some automatic walkage. So with this keyframe selected and highlighted, if I right click on it, create walk cycle, bada bing, bada boom. And if we watch this, then we see that Steve is walking on the thing there. And he's walking a bit too fast. So let's bring this down to 180 and see we can time that up yeah, it's a little bit better but still looks terrible but anyway as you can see we can easily make Steve walk in this path where if you've used my animator before paths then you know how difficult it could be to get a walk cycle like this where Steve is walking in kind of an unusual non blocky shape so uh, that's one way you can use it and you can also use it as we did earlier if we bring back our shape like I showed earlier and we bring in a minecart we can actually do the same thing for it we're gonna make the minecart follow poopy and we're gonna set our keyframe that's kind of way out here let's bring that back to the beginning and we'll just set it a little bit closer in here and we'll say you go like so something like that and then when we play that back we can make our minecart follow our path there which is very nice and very easy to animate that compared to before when you would have to animate all manually the minecart following this path another thing we can do as you can see is we have an imported world here and this is probably the preferable way to do such a thing if you wanted to have a minecart following a rail or something is to actually just have it 
in your world. And then what we'll do is bring in a new path. We'll just slap it down and we're just gonna try to line it up generally about where our uh, rail is there, maybe lift it up just a tad. And we're gonna do like we did before, we add a point. So we've got that point there and let's control D, I almost said shift D for some reason. We're gonna go here and we're just gonna kind of rough this out for the moment. We're gonna see where this gets us. Control D out here and you can see that we're having some uh, issues there, if you can see that, it's kind of hard to see on the sand actually, isn't it? So what we might do here is go to Smooth Path, turn that off, and there you can see that it's actually uh, a little bit easier to, to line these things up. Anyway, you can kind of see what I'm doing here, so we're just going to keep building our path out. Alright, so there's our path, and uh, the way this path thing works, it's kind of uh, adaptive to every time you add a point to it, so there's probably a bit of finagling that you'll have to do in order to get things exactly the way you want them to be. But uh, we can also select multiples if we need to make some kind of widespread corrections. So we're just gonna try to even that out a little bit there. Maybe this one, bring it over a tad. And so we have our path aligned with our rail. And of course, just like before, we're gonna go to our minecart. We're gonna say, hey, you align to path there. And we want to make sure that our position is at zero because we don't want there to be any position differences with the minecart affecting how it relates to our path. Ooh, that's a lot to say for no reason. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and add another keyframe and put our offset way down here eh, at the end. Indeed. Could add an explosion, but I'm too lazy to go through all that effort. Zoo, look at our minecart. But boosh, dude, just had that easy. That's so much quicker and easier than if you had to animate that manually like I had to do in the past. It just follows the path and of course, you know, again, you can refine that. If we go to our path here, let's uh let's just add some detail for no reason and see what that does. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it 16 points of detail. I don't know why. And that actually works a little bit better, so you may actually not want to reduce your detail. It all depends how your path is laid out and all that kind of stuff I burped. So there you go. That's how you can use a path. It's how you can texture it, how you can animate stuff on it. There's all kinds of things you could do. This is just kind of some basic stuff. <sighs> Hope that was helpful. Kind of twists in my brain a little bit if you catch, catch my drift. If you get, get what I'm saying, feel a little bit frazzled. And, uh, stuff.